and they was chasing Dolph right to Memphis, straight up to the cookie shop, man. Hey, subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment, let me know if you a fan of Young Dolph, Big Scar, Gucci Man. Let's get right into it, man. So this whole thing was a chase on who was going to get to Dolph first. You had all them people who was planning and plotting, talking to Black Youngster, talking to Big Jook, Yo Gotti, all of them money bag, yo. And so they had multiple people already who was going to be the pawn guys, who was going to be the ones who really end up doing all the dirt and stuff, right? And so basically it was like, okay, who's going to be the one that sees Dolph first? You got to remember, Dolph was coming from New York and Atlanta with Big Moochie Grape doing that whole music video. They was about to do another music video at the cookie shop. And so that's why he called Snoop Bands at nine in the morning, tell them, get ready, meet up and everything. But at that time, it was already too late because people had spotted him. And so that's why you heard the stories. You heard about the cars and how many of them there was. It was like five or six cars going after him, basically. They seen him at the gas station, which was not even that same day. Somebody already said the person who took the picture said it wasn't even the same day. It was the day before. So not only did they know him where he was at and what he was doing the day before, but they knew the day of and the night and everything. Right. And so that's how they had all them goons sweeping around, basically turning the corner. They were like three cars back tailing him. And so they will wait and, and slow down in traffic and let the car get a lot of space in front of them and always have just random people who's driving in between so it don't look like they just right behind them. And that's why you seen that white Corvette and that was money bag yo's. And then you seen the Bentley and you seen that big truck and all the other stuff, man. And so what y'all got to understand is that they already had the people on lookout with that meeting that they had the two days or that night before when they grouped everybody up that was basically against Dolph. That's when they were pretty much discussing like, OK, we're going to have people posted over here. People going to be posted over there. And so basically this is what we're hearing, you know, and all the sh all the alleged things and everything that you thought about. How how could they know where he is if they wasn't looking for him? Exactly. And so that's another thing that you got to realize and open your eyes and understand the fact that it was multiple people who was basically telling him they had to go and try to get the money that, that was going to be on his head like that was the whole motivation the whole thing around it because you would think why would people want to do it well when somebody put the money up then that's what makes them change into like everything is out of the question it's no longer a fair game basically and so that's what was really going on but the thing is, is that they didn't think that it was going to end up being as sloppy as it was and have all the details spilled out have all the um, people who was outside and seen it and heard it Everybody knew that it was something going on, and that's why they came out to check in it. And it's like we still haven't seen the actual footage of the car pulling up and everything like that. So then again, it goes to show you didn't know if somebody was already following him right into the parking lot. Like they was even saying that he could have ran into the shop knowing he was getting chased. And then that's when the people came after him. And so it's a whole lot of that going around. But we really wouldn't know until they actually show the footage of him actually walking in. That's what people wanted to know or pulling up in the parking lot. And so that's when you already got to understand that they had the walkie talkies going back and forth, basically in a 30 mile radius through the whole city of Memphis. They can go walkie talkie back and forth if they see him. And so that's how they spotted him at one place <clears throat> going to the next. And then somebody will pop up out of a random street. Boom. And then there'll be like two cars behind them and they'll keep an eye. And then once they go into another zone, they'll end up turning off and somebody else will start following all the way till they ended up to back at that cookie shop and everything like that. But the thing is, is too, that it's little flaws, it's little holes in the whole story because the fam was saying that they didn't even see him for two days. So how could he be going and running the errand to get something for somebody if they hadn't even seen him for two days? And so that's when you got to think about what happened at the Benny Hanna's in the parking lot. And that's where the Bentley came into question first because they might have had him in the Bentley at first and then dropped him off to the cookie shop. 
at 5 a.m. or something like that or overnight, you know, because they was open late. They had, you know, they always got the delivery vans coming back and forth, allegedly. And so all of the stuff that people are saying is that it could have been a situation where it was even like the night before that they tried to run up on him at the Benihana's and right after the picture was taken. And so what's going on now is that when they asked Big Jook all the questions about everything like that, he was telling them about what happened at the restaurant, what happened with the meeting, what happened with the people following him, and why was the Bentley there, and who was driving the Bentley, and whose phone was connected on the Bluetooth of the Bentley when it got pinged the location right there in front of the cookie shop, and that's why it made they it made them release the full picture of that front view of you when you saw the two people running back into the getaway car. And then the getaway driver fleeing, you saw that was three people in that car. And that one of them was Shondell. They still looking for him. They actually caught him and then they released him because he gave him info to get the other two guys. So they traded two dudes for one, <laughs> but they ended up releasing the wrong one because he could have been one of the dudes who was involved actually being one of the pawn pieces. And so that's why they want to get him back because the other two already said and now Big Jook confirmed that Shondell was one of the two people. And then that's another thing is that they told you that it was only two people, but it was a third one. Somebody had to be the driver. Somebody had to get. They only did snapshots and stills and screenshots of the security system from ADT that was in the cookie shop in the office. And so what y'all got to understand is that when Big Jook broke it down to him because they was trying to hit Big Jook with the Rico they were trying to hit him with the Rico, so he didn't want the Rico. So they had they said, if you don't want the Rico, you're going to have to tell everything that happened in detail and fashionably order in a single file line. And so that's when he was like, OK, he started, you know, going, going, telling, telling. They brought him food. They brought him lunch in, oodles and noodles, everything like that. Right. And then fast forward, he came out with a drink cup in his hand and somebody picked him up in that in a whole nother whip. And so that's when you realize that, oh, one of the people who saw him out there that was like a doll fan or something, right? They were like, dang, I just seen Big Jook come out with a drink cup in his hand, like slurping on it with the ice and everything like that. And so that's how they know that you only get the drink cup like that if you would have told and had a meal inside there. Otherwise, it would be a quick interaction. It would be quick gone if he had nothing to say and said that he didn't want to, he wanted to use the fifth or something like that, right? And so, basically, that's when they knew, oh, yeah, we seen it. Yup, Big Jerk had the cup, the drink cup. That means he had the toll on everything. And so, that's how they figured out and got the two more people with Govan and all of that. And so, because they was directly connected to Straight Drop. And he told them who helped straight drop that day, who helped them hide the whip and who helped them do that? Like, where did they go to right after that? And so that's when they started following the details. And basically, Yo Gotti's brother put, put, threw everybody under the bus and possibly could have told on some uh, a lot of the people in CMG. And so, because you got to understand, they was trying to hit them with the Rico. So at the end of the day, he was basically choosing between whether he's going to walk or uh, or if he was going to have to sit down and take the hit for everything like that. And so that's why he didn't want to take the blame. Grove Hero already said that Big Jook was the one who put the money up and everything like that. And so without, I mean, if he knew, he knew that I guess the streets was talking and everything like that. But a lot of people that's close to the situation out there in Memphis, the sources say that it might be a situation that could be possible. And so that's why everything is coming out now. Everything that happened in the dark is coming to light. So what goes around comes around. And so what's happening in the situation is that Everything is basically right there, red-handed. They got him and everything like that. And so Big Jook was, like, trying to make it so that they don't have to go to Yo Gotti and have to visit him. But by the way it looks, by the stuff that he told, they're still going to have to go up and talk to everybody. Maybe they might have to, it might be in a private situation or something like that. But eventually, they're going to ask if Yo Gotti even connected to him, what, how he knows uh, Big Jook, what did he do and everything, where does he work, all that, right? And so they're going to figure all that stuff out. So, hey, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment down below. I'm going to catch you on the next one.